when God is in it. When God is in it. He has the power to fix it how he want it to be. Do I have some help in this house? Beloved, if you just keep on living, all of us will experience some defining moments that will shape and change our lives forever. Uh, when somebody decides to quit drinking, that's a defining moment. When somebody decides to quit cheating, that's a defining moment. When somebody decides, I'm going to quit the club life and change my life to a church life, that's a defining moment. When you decide, I'm going to stop shacking, I'm going to stop playing house, I'm going to stop living in common law marriage, but I'm going to do it in the way of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, that's a defining moment. And defining moments are only defining moments when God is in it. For, for instance, for instance, anybody here like Kool-Aid? What my Kool-Aid crowd at? Anybody grew up on Kool-Aid like I did? Who in here know how to make some real Kool-Aid? Talk to me somebody. You, you know, when you make Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid need three essential ingredients. Talk back to me somebody. <laughs> Number one, you got to have the Kool-Aid powder. <laughs> Number two, you got to have some water. But everybody know number three, you got to have, talk to me somebody, tell your neighbor, that's God. <laughs> Just like sugar makes the difference in Kool-Aid, the Lord makes the difference in our lives. If you don't have sugar in Kool-Aid, you just got colored water. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody here know, have you ever drunk some Kool-Aid that didn't have enough sugar in it? You almost cussed everybody out in the house. What, what the world is? The difference maker. When God is in it, he makes the difference. Anybody remember when y'all first got your first TV? Oh, I'm taking you back this morning. Anybody remember those days? Come on, help me. I, I don't know about y'all. Y'all may think I'm young, I'm young, but I'm not as young as what you think I am. I, I came up under Grandmama Nim. Talk to me, somebody. Who, who else in here came up under Grandmama Nim? You know, Nim is everybody else. Nim, talk to me, somebody. And I remember when Mama first got the TV. And y'all remember when you had the TV? It was a black and white TV. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of the young folk don't know nothing about no black and white television. Talk to me, somebody. And, and you remember you only had three stations? Y'all remember that? Had channel three. Talk to me, somebody. Channel five. And then you had channel U for Universal. Talk to me, somebody. But the only way the TV worked, you had to have an antenna. Are y'all in this house? And, and some of y'all was like us. We couldn't afford a real antenna. So y'all know what you did, don't you? You went in that closet, talked to me somebody, got that wire hanger and stuck it in the back of that TV. Tell your neighbor, that's God. God is the difference maker. When God is in it, he will make the difference. Sound like you came to have church today. Beloved, when you read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's filled with story after story that when, when God got in the situation, he made the difference. I could be here all day giving you story after story. I give you one off the top of my head. You remember when Joshua and Israel had made it to the promised land, but they ran into a Jericho wall. Do I have any Bible readers here? And isn't that just how life is? That, that soon as you get ready to go into your promised land, soon as you get ready to go into your blessing, as soon as it look like things are finally turning around, you run into a Jericho wall. Am I in the house by myself today? 
But beloved, notice how the Lord got in it and made the difference. He told Joshua and Israel, he said, listen, march around the wall for seven days, but on each day, march around one time. And then on the seventh day, march around seven times. Come on, Bible readers. And when you march around seven times on the seventh day, I want you to shout, do I have a witness here? And he said, then I get in it and I'll tear the wall down. How many of you know, beloved, their walking around didn't knock the wall down. Their worship wasn't the only thing that knocked the wall down. But their faith in God to do what he said caused God to get in it and the Lord, he knocked the wall down. He didn't use a bulldozer, a bomb, a bat, do I have a witness here? But the Lord used their praise and their worship to knock the wall down. Shake your neighbor hand and say, neighbor, when you have faith in God, he will get in your situation. Somebody here know he will do it, won't he? And he'll turn that thing around. Yeah. In the text in the Bible, that's tell it to teach us and train us, y'all, and watch this, and tutor us about the fact that that when you can get God in your situation, the Lord, he will make the difference. It has to be what God did, Brother Deacons, for this brother named Nehemiah. Y'all got time for me to tell you about Nehemiah? Matter of fact, beloved, when you go home tonight, your homework assignment is to read up on Nehemiah because you'll find yourself in the story. Nehemiah was a unique and unusual fella. Nehemiah was a man of God. Can I tell you some beloved, the Lord is looking for some men of God. Some sister in here is looking for a man of God. Anybody know what a man of God is? That means God is in the man. Talk to me, somebody. Uh, a man of God said, I put Jesus first and then everything else got to fall in line. A man of God believe in getting up, coming to church every Sunday. Do I have a witness? Man of God know how to get on his bended knees and have a talk with God in prayer. A man of God know how to be faithful in giving his tithe and his offering. Are there any men of God in the house right now? Oh, y'all done got a little quiet on me in here. You done got a little, I got one brother. Amen. Thank you, brother. I got a little quiet. Should have had three or four other men popped up right then. If you're a man of God, come on, men. Are there any men of God in the house? Any, any men that know you a real man because you serve a real God and you got a real relationship? Any real men of God in the house? He was a man of God. He was one of the children of Israel. He was a cup bearer to King Artaxius. But when he got word, y'all, that his hometown, Jerusalem, the headquarter, the foundation of the people of God, you know, Jerusalem where the Ark of the Covenant is in the temple. Y'all know about Jerusalem, don't you? That that new Jerusalem that when Jesus come back and gather up the saints, we're going to live in not Jackson, but a new Jerusalem. Tell your neighbor, it's called Jerusalem. He got word that the walls were down. And Nehemiah said, I can't let them go out like that. Nehemiah saw what we ought to see when we look at this world. Nehemiah said, I see my family. I see my children. I see my future grandchildren, great grands and great great grands. I see my generations out there. I see the people of God going through some stuff in their life. 
And he said, Lord, if you give me strength, he said, I'll be the one to go back and help build up the wall. Beloved, why are you here? Ask your neighbor, what you doing here? What's your aim in life? I wish I had a witness in here. What's your purpose? Why are you here? Are you just sucking up God's oxygen? Breathing out God's carbon dioxide and still won't tell the Lord thank you. Ask your neighbor why, and I want you to get countrified with it. Why is you here? God said, I'm looking for some Nehemiahs. I wish I had some help in this house. He said, I'm looking for some Nehemiahs that don't mind that, that they not going to make no excuses. But per pastor, bro, pastor, I'm going to roll up my sleeve. I'm going to tighten up my bootstraps. And I'll help you rebuild up the wall. The walls were down. You know what a wall is. Notice, I only got but like one or two points. I'm taking my time. Notice, I did not say the foundation was down. Your Bible said the walls were down. Talk to me somebody. Foundation is the truth by which we stand. But the walls is what connect the foundation to the rest of the building. Are y'all in this house? The walls represent our relationship with Jesus who is our foundation. The walls were down. Can I tell you what's wrong with Cherry Grove? And not only Cherry Grove, but people all over this city, our walls are down. Where is your relationship with God? When will the Lord be number one in your life? The walls were down. I wish I had some help in the house. When you go put God first? Y'all ain't saying nothing but your boy up here preaching today. Come on, nudge your neighbor. When is Jesus going to be more important in your life than anything or anybody else? Your walls are down. Anytime we live in a world where we are satisfied with living in sin, the walls are down. Come on, help your boy preach up here, y'all. I want to help some help us today. In, anytime we live in a world that's filled with alcohol, filled with drug abuse, filled with abuse, filled with crime, filled with violence, filled with homosexuality, filled with lesbianism, won't come to church, won't praise the Lord, won't tell God thank you, won't give our tithe and offering, won't find a ministry to serve in, the walls are down. Somebody got to say something. I just figured it might as well be me. I'm up here at the mic. God said, where my Nehemiah's at? Don't you know that most churches, 20% carry 80% of the church? Don't you know most folk that come to church don't read their Bible until they get to church? your neighbor how you gonna fight a full time devil and you giving God part time service the walls are down but thank God he still got some Nehemiahs he still got some Nehemiahs he still got some men and some women that said, Pastor, I'm tired, but I'm coming in the house. Pastor, I'm tired, but I'll be at rehearsal in the house. I wish I had a witness here. Pastor, I'm tired, but I'm coming to church in the house. If I can work a double shift, I can serve God a double shift. Do I have a witness here? Are there any Nehemiahs or Nehemiahs in the house? 
what kind of future your children go have. Where your grandchildren going? Where your son going? Ted, talk to me, somebody. Come on, help me now. Where your daughter going? What kind of life are we going to have? The walls are down. But here's the good news. Thank God for the word, y'all. Because the Lord, even right now, is penetrating some brother, some sister's heart that said, Lord, I will be your Nehemiah. Lord, I'll be your Nehemiah. Lord, you can depend on me to help build the walls back up. Can I give you this one little part then? Get out the way. You got to understand what the problem is. But being, then become part of the solution. I'm going to say that again. I want you to catch it with both hands. You got to understand what the problem is, y'all. But God is looking for somebody that's willing to be part of the solution. Don't you get tired of folk that's always talking about what's wrong? But don't never come up with tangible things to help you right the wrong. Talk to me, somebody. I already know what's wrong. Help me get the thing right. The text said that Nehemiah was a cupbearer, which means he lived in the palace with the king. The cupbearer had the most dangerous job in the entire camp. Because the cupbearer had to taste test every food and every drink before it ever got to the king. In other words, if somebody put poison in the food, guess who go die first? The cupbearer. He's looking for somebody in Cherry Grove right now that'll put their life on the line to protect the name of Jesus the Christ. I'm scared to ask, are there any cup bearers in here? Y'all gonna be. Do I have a witness here? Cup bearer meant also that he ate in the palace. He lived in the palace. He dressed like he was in the palace. He rode in the palace. He walked in the palace, but Nehemiah had a heart for God that when he found out where the people were, he decided to leave the life of the palace to help lift his people that was down in the pit. I'm gonna ask you again, why are you here?